Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. This week is actually the National Week of Prayer for the Healing of AIDS. Now, this includes prayer for all of those who are infected with the HIV AIDS virus, those who know someone infected with it, those who have lost a loved one, and for those who have never known a world without AIDS. This week brings national attention to the AIDS epidemic in the U.S. Now, here in Monroe County, we have an amazing organization organization known as AIDS Help that plays such an important role in the epidemic every day. One of their many roles is to educate us all about HIV and AIDS. So this morning I'm going to show you two testimonials from their recent exhibit, I Am That Someone. Someone would come in, I would do the blood draw and I would tell them they were positive and that, that's hard. The new generation doesn't really understand what it is and what it means and, and we, we really need to know and understand our history. There's a famous saying that those who don't know their history are bound to repeat it and that's what I'm afraid of. HIV is a preventable disease. We know how to prevent it. We know how to take those steps and yet we see new cases every day. There was a time where there was a lot of activism around this and there were people that were angry and people really wanted to take care of each other in a community. That's dissipated. I think it became most personal to me when I came out and when I saw that it was affecting the community I was living in. I was 21, I was in school in Colorado and I had come out and I didn't know a lot of other gay men. And I really was interested on how, how as a gay man, you know, our relationships worked and how we communicated with one another and, and what are the dynamics of those relationships and, and how do we have healthy relationships. A big part of that is, is negotiating and talking about sex and HIV is a big factor of that. When I look at people living with HIV and AIDS, I don't see a person that is only living with HIV and AIDS. I see a person who is dealing with the same problems in life that I am dealing with, that you are dealing with. We can talk about people who have diabetes, who are overweight, who do not take good care of their health, but we don't shame that behavior. We shame sexual relationships and use HIV as a result of a shamed experience. I encourage people to to be honest with themselves first, you know, and to to be ready to have that conversation. There's nothing more natural, there's nothing more timeless than a sexual relationship. You take yourself from the moment you've been diagnosed as HIV positive, you have a positive test result, and you deal with that moment of sheer anxiety and fear and not knowing what's going to happen. And, and I've seen people really grow as, as human beings through this experience and become very self-aware. I'm Matthew and I am that someone. The 60s, it was the sexual revolution and I don't know anybody that didn't have premarital sex. It became personal immediately, thinking back as to what was going on in your life, etc. HIV was like a chameleon. Every day it had a different color. You really had to dig um, for information, correct information. But I looked up a lot of things because of my daughters. I probably had conversations with my daughters that most mothers wouldn't have had. I've always had gay friends. A very, very good friend of mine, very dear friend of mine is HIV positive and that's when it became really personal because we're just best friends. So it changes their lives so drastically that at a very young age they may find themselves without a partner for the rest of their life. That's sad. I'm not sure that the people living in Key West with HIV are fully aware of the people living outside of this community that don't have that financial aid, housing aid, don't have the help that they have. Society has more to do with stigma to me than an actual disease. The stigma can actually be the disease. You know what I mean? They continue to treat it like a gay disease. And that was a big mistake. That was a big mistake. I have three children, grown children. I have five grandchildren. I have one great grandbaby, another one on the way. Uh, this should be considered like any other disease that belongs to all of us. It just, it's, it's ours, own it. I'm Fizz, and I'm that someone. 
At the end of today's show, I'll be talking about the 23rd annual AIDS Help Art Auction. But first, entertainer Nancy Three Hoffman joins me after these messages.